worship is such a powerful thing that God uses with all of us. And I praise the Lord for allowing us to come here and praise His holy name. That He has given us this opportunity to glorify, magnify His glorious name on this Saturday night. Blessed be the name of God. Open the word of God to the Exodus 19. Exodus 19. Exodus 19 verses 1 through 6. Exodus 19 versículos del 1 al 6. Glory be to God. And here we have an account, y aquí miramos la historia, on how God finally reaches out to His people after they've been out in the desert, after crossing the Red Sea, and God wants to make a commitment with His people. Y aquí miramos como Dios, después que le ayuda al pueblo de Israel a cruzar el Mar Rojo, ya está listo para hacer en realidad un verdadero uh, conexión con su pueblo. Así que eso es lo que vamos a leer esta noche. Exodus 19, verses 1 through 6. And in the third month, after the Israelites left Egypt, on that very day, they came to the desert of Sinai. And after they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called from him from the mountain, and said, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did in Egypt, and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now if you obey me and fully keep and keep my commandment, then out of all the nations you will be my treasure possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. May God add wisdom to his word. After 90 days, the Bible says, three months have gone by. Tres meses han pasado. And God is now ready to make a commitment with Israel. Y Dios ya se listo a hacer una, un pacto con Israel. He says it is now time that we have to get down to make a covenant with my people. Dice hay que hacer un pacto entre mi pueblo y yo. Because up to this point, momento, they have seen miracles, they have experienced the signs, they have seen the wonders of God, how Moses after 40 years, they thought the man was dead. Como Moisés, después de 40 años, pensaron que el hombre ya se Now shows up as a prophet anointed by God. Hoy regresa como profeta un And he tells the most powerful man of the world in that time. Y le dice el hombre más poderoso en ese tiempo. The God of Israel says, let my people go. Que el Dios de Israel dice, suelta a mi pueblo. And they saw how the heart of the Pharaoh would not let them go. Y ellos vieron como el corazón del faraón no los permitió ir. And God had to bring the ten plagues over Egypt. And uh, they were ready to leave on their exodus. And God gives them all the gold. God gives them all the silver. He gives them all the animals, all the belongings that were part of the Egyptians. And he gives them the miracle of crossing the Red Sea. People that had never seen a large body of water. People had seen the Nile from a distance. Something they had never imagined they would ever come to face with. Maybe it may be a diagnosis for you today. Maybe it's a job search that you're going through. Maybe it's a new course that you're taking in school. You have seen it from a distance. But now the hand of God is blocking the walls of water. He is making dry ground where other people would drown. Where others cannot cross over. God's power is guiding you through. And if it wasn't for the breath of God. If it wasn't for the wind of God. What would easily kill somebody else. God is bringing you through. And God has brought them through the Red Sea. And now as they come to the third month. 
month hoy que llegan al tercer mes, God says I'm ready to make a covenant with you for you see gifts and miracles can only carry you so far es que los dones y los milagros solo te pueden llevar hasta una etapa gifts that God gives you los regalos que Dios te da can only open doors for you solo puede abrir las puertas para ti But it's your relationship with God es la relación que tienes con Dios that will determine whether you'll be promoted or not. Determina si vas a ser promovido si o no. So you can be a talented speaker. Así que puedes ser una una persona que habla You can be a talented doctor. Puedes ser un buen doctor. Or be talented in whatever God calls you to do. O tener mucho talento en cualquier cosa donde Whether you're a musician. Si sos músico. Maybe you're good with numbers and money. Tal vez sos bueno con dinero. Your gifts will open up doors. Sus dones abrirán puertas. But it's your relationship with God. Pero es tu relación con that Dios. will determine whether you get promoted to the next level. Que va a determinar si vas a ser promovido al próximo nivel. And a lot of times we say the devil stole my blessing. Y muchas veces nosotros decimos el diablo fue que robó. Or we say the enemy is after my finances. O el enemigo quiere venir contra mis Or my, the enemy is attacking me in my home or at work. But a lot of times, the reason why the doors get closed on us is that people really get to know our attitudes. People really get to know who we really are. And they will say, yes, you are gifted. But you always show up late yes you are gifted but you have a bad attitude yes you are gifted but you are lazy and that's why sometimes we blame the devil but a lot of times is that we really show who we are because the gifts can only open the doors But your relationship with God will determine whether you stay determina si vas a quedar parado. and when you will be promoted vas a ser when you have the favor of God el favor when you have the mercy of God when you have the grace of God you say no matter what I do whether I'm earning $11 an hour or I'm earning $50 an hour I will honor God in whatever I do because I know my gifts will always open up doors but it's my relationship with God in whatever I do that I honor Him that I glorify Him that I give back to Him that will determine how much further I will go and now Israel was coming to a point that they had seen the miracles of God they had seen the gifts of God but God said I now need to promote you to a new level and the Bible says in verse 1 that in the third month the Israel left Egypt And on the 90th day of the third month, that day, that very same day, and that's what I need to tell you this tonight, we believe in that day, God. You sometimes we think that the day will come. Or the day will happen. Or when we pray enough. Or when we're good enough. Or when we give enough. Or maybe when we shout loud enough. But here I'm here to tell you. That God has a timetable for you. And he is that day God. That he keeps an account. No matter how good you are. No matter how much you have gone back to the 
the world. God has a way to bring you back. He says, I brought you out of slavery. I went and knocked the Pharaoh out of his throne. And I didn't put all that effort. And I didn't put all that energy to bring you out of your country. To bring you out of jail. To bring you out of the hospital. To bring you out of misery. To promote you to education. To promote you in your job. Because I am that day God. And I praise you for that. Because he is my that day God. But that very same day. He didn't think about it. He didn't pray about it. He didn't consult the angels about it. But he said I have a plan for my people. I have a plan for my church. I have a plan for your family. I have a plan for you. And you don't have to wait no more. And you don't have to suffer no more. Because I am that day God for my people. And I love it because it says that day he came to the wilderness. God will find you wherever you are. When your gifts have run out. When you no longer see miracles. Where you only see dry ground. Where no water will quench your thirst. Where there is no shade to cover you from the sun. And you think that you're nothing but a memory to God. Maybe you think you're a failure to God. That day where you are. In the middle of your wilderness. In the, in the middle of your own pain. Whether you call it depression. Whether you call it an oppression. Maybe it's an attack on the enemy. Maybe you feel that God has not hurt you. That day in the wilderness. God will come to you. God will speak to you. God will reveal to you. And I don't know about you. But I thank God. That he found me in my wilderness. But I had forgotten about him. He never forgot about me. Before I even knew he cared. I cared for him. He cared for me first. And that day God came to the Israelites. And if he could come to the people in the desert, how much more can I God find you today? Can I find you in your situation? Can I find you in your circumstance? Can I find you in your difficult situation? Everybody thinks that everything is going okay. Because we only compare ourselves to the people around us. And that's what the Israelites were doing. They thought we must all be okay. Because we are all in the desert. We got cattle. We have all types of animals. We have all types of gold. We have all types of silver. But the one other thing they had in common is that they were also lost in the desert. The problem that we have in society today is that we compare ourselves to each other. Oh, are you like me? Do you have the same ideas? Do we have the same concepts? Do we have the same circle of friends? And yes, we can have common things and we can have things that make us different. But just like Israel, without God, we are all lost. Without the blood of Jesus, we are all unsaved. So we are all unclean. And we all deserve the penalty of sin. And the Bible says in verse 2, that after they set out from Rephidim and if you remember this place Rephidim 
is found in Exodus 17. Se Exodus 17. Because after they crossed the Red Sea, que el Mar Rojo, and they had all these possessions, y todas esas cosas con ellos, sometimes the thing the money can't buy algo que el no puede comprar, is the things that you really need. Son las cosas que realmente necesitas. And what they really needed at Refidim, y lo que ellos necesitaban de Refidim was water. Era la agua. You know, you gotta be really careful with money. Hay que tener mucho cuidado con nuestros dineros. Because sometimes we think that money can buy what we want. Porque pensamos que el dinero nos compra todo lo que queremos. And yet we beg for what we need. Y después estamos rogando por lo que queremos. They thought they had the money to buy whatever they needed. Ellos pensaban que tenían el dinero para comprar cualquier cosa. But when it came to life's basic necessities, Pero cuando vino a la necesidad más básica, they had to beg of God. Tuvieron que rogarle a Dios. How many times have you bought whatever you wanted? ¿Cuántas veces hemos comprado nosotros lo que queríamos? Spend money on whatever you wanted. Hemos gastado dinero en cualquier cosa. And I'm not saying you can't go on vacations. Y yo no estoy diciendo que no puedes ir. You can't buy a car or a house. No But when you spend and overspend more than what you got, Pero cuando gastas más de lo que tienes, sometimes when you have to face life's hardest moments, a veces cuando nos toca que enfrentar los momentos más difíciles, you have to beg the bank. You have to beg the credit card. You gotta beg your parents. You have to beg your friends for what God already provided you. But because you were in the desert, you thought that you had it made. You thought that everything was all set. But once you face the rock, when you face a hard situation, when you realize there's things that money cannot buy, it can buy you treatment, it can buy you happiness, but it can't buy you more life, it can't buy you more family, it can't buy you more health. And that refidim, God had to teach His people. That now you have moved from the slavery of Egypt. But now I have to break you from the slavery of your mind. That only because you are blessed. De porque solo sos bendecido. Doesn't mean you are anointed. No significa que sos ungido. Oh, I need to say that again. Tenemos que si sos una vez más. Only because you are blessed. Solo porque sos bendecido. Doesn't mean you are anointed. No significa que sos ungido de Dios. Because if we're really honest with ourselves, si somos con mismos, the times we see the greatest blessings and miracles of God los que hemos visto los grandes, más de Dios, were the times where we were the weakest los que los más and the times that we were most vulnerable. Y los que más a lot of times we think that we're anointed. A, veces a lot of times hijos. we think that we're walking right with God. We think it's because of that. Y pensamos que por eso, the doors are opening. Que las the miracles are happening. Los that the man is descending. But it is because we are our weakest. Es en when we can't tibia. do things to ourselves. When we can even mismos. keep a thought in our own head. When we don't know how we're going to find a way out of the situation. God works the immigration miracle. God works the financial miracle. God works the healing miracle. God breaks the strongholds. God opens up the heavens. Man at the sense. Water comes from the rock. And it's not because we're blessed. It is because God sees us in our weakness and that if he does not intervene if he does not come into the wilderness if he doesn't show up on that day of your need he knows that you're going to die not just die physically but you may die emotionally you may die spiritually you may die morally you may die to your sexual desires you might die to your financial desires. And that's why God intervenes. Did you not know? 
no sabían that the majority of people who win the lottery que la mayoría de personas que ganan la lotería within two years they're already bankrupt entre dos y dos años ya no tienen ningún dinero can you imagine 10 million dollars gone in less than two years diez millones de dólares ya en la bancarrota en dos años there was a man había un hombre who was auctioning <laughs> que estaba uh, estaba una supuesta and he was he had won a millionaire for life y le había ganado millonario por vida which meant that every month he would always get a check for a thousand dollars el significa que cada mes recibía un cheque por mil dólares the man is 55 years old el, or so el hombre tiene 55 años and he was saying because I need ten thousand dollars to get myself out of my own personal debt. Él dice necesito diez mil dólares para salir de mi deuda personal. I am auctioning whatever is left of my life. Yo estoy en esta supuesta lo que está todavía de mi vida. So whatever month I'm still alive. Así que cada mes que yo estoy todavía vivo. If you pay off my debt, si tú pagas mi deuda, I will give you my thousand dollars for life. Yo te daré mis mil dólares por vida. But what about if the man dies after two months? Y pasa si el muere en dos meses. Or maybe he decides to take his life after two years. O tal vez se morir en dos años. It is so hard to sometimes comprehend what people will put the price on their own lives. Es en qué por las sus vidas. And people were making bids that they were willing to give the man 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. Y había gente, 10, 000, to win his money for life Para ganar su dinero por vida. and yet his life Pero su vida was at risk ya estaba already of being bankrupt al punto de llegar a la bancarrota. and this was what happened with Israel. Y eso pasó con Israel they had made plans for life Ellos los planes para they la vida. thought they were going to sell this gold Ellos que maybe vamos they're going to sell este oro. the silver vamos la plata. but what is it good to have all these things y si eres bueno tener todas esas if cosas, there's nothing good to trade it for si no bueno if there's nothing good to invest it in que no hay nada if perdido. there's nothing worth to pass it on to future generations no hay nada para pasada para las futuras generaciones. And as they were dying of thirst, y cuando ellos se comían, se miraban a sí mismos. And they said, Did you pack the y dijeron, guardaron los, los platos de, de plata. Did you take the golden candlesticks? Llevaron todo aquello de oro. And all that you packed in your luggage. Y todo lo que guardaste en sus maletas. Did you pack any water? Guardaste agua. And the problem is that we like to think on future big things. Y los problemas es que nosotros queremos pensar en lo más grande del futuro. But we don't pack water. Pero no guardamos la agua. For what we need every day. We don't días. give water to our children. No le damos agua we don't give hijos. water to our wives. No we don't give cosas. water to our husbands. No we don't give cosas. water to the ministry. No and you can have the most beautiful plant but if that plant runs out of water no tiene agua. It's gonna die. Se va a morir. You can put it in the nicest building. Lo puedes poner you can put it in bonito. the most beautiful window. Puedes poner la ventana Overlooking más bella. Overlooking the ocean. Viendo el mar. With an open breeze. Con, con el brisa que entra. But if there's no water for the Pero plant. Si no hay ninguna agua para esa planta. The plant's gonna die. La planta se va a morir. We can have the best of things. Podemos tener las mejores de cosas. And yet be dying inside. Y se muriendo los de dentro. Be empty inside. Still be lonely inside. Still be depressed inside. Still feel all alone inside. And God reminded His people at Rephidim that I will be the water that flows for you. I will be your ample water. I will be your quenching water. I will be your sweet water. I will be your fountain of life. I will be your new song upon your lips. I will be the lifter of your head. I will be the hallelujah to yourself. I will be the carrier of your dreams. 
Yo sé el cortador de tus I will be the healer of your body. Yo sé el sanador de tu cuerpo. And sometimes we need to come to understand that he's not only the God that crosses, allows us to cross the Red Sea. No solo es el Dios que nos permite cruzar el mar rojo. But he's also the God of Rephidim. Pero también es el Dios de Rephidim. The God that provides when nothing else can provide. The God that can give what money cannot buy. The God that can heal what the doctor cannot do. When I'm in front of the rock and there's no more strength, where there's no place to go, I thank God that He, through the striking of the rock, that by cutting the rock open, by moving the rock, the same way He provided water for Israel, the same way that the angel moved the rock out of the tomb, when Jesus came out of that rock, when Jesus came out of the rock, He was not the rock of Horeb, but He was the rock of my salvation. He is the rock of my faith. He is the rock of my family. He's the rock of my faith. And whatever flows out of His heart, whatever flows out of His hands, whatever flows out of His heart, will be greater than what any water I can buy. Oh, praise God. You know, 90 days, 90 days seems like a long time. Parece mucho tiempo. But 90 days also is a very short period of time. Pero 90 días también es un tiempo bien, bien pequeño. You know, a lot of times when you go and get a new job, a veces cuando buscamos un nuevo trabajo, they will say, you are hired. Dicen, si te contratamos. But you have to pass the 90 day probationary period. Pero tienes que pasar los 90 días de, de, de prueba. Because we will train you. Porque si te vamos a dar todo el entrenamiento, we will pay you, si te vamos a pagar, but if after 90 days, pero si después de 90 días, we are concerned about your behavior, si tenemos problemas con tu conducta, if we have questions about the way you act, si tenemos problemas en la manera que te conduces, we have concerns about the way you work, y tenemos problemas en la manera que trabajas, whatever we sign, lo que nosotros whatever tenemos, we promise, lo que nosotros hacemos, whatever benefits you are going to receive, they're null and void because you did not pass the probationary period a lot of women muchas mujeres, when they become pregnant they will not announce that they are pregnant no anuncia que están embarazadas. Until they pass their first trimester. Hasta cuando su preparan su primer trimestre. That means one, two, three months. Se significa tres meses. That means ninety days. Noventa días. Because they want to make sure that after those ninety days. Porque se queda seguro que después de esos noventa días. That baby is alive. Ese bebé va a estar vivo. That baby is well. Ese bebé va a estar bien. And they go through that danger zone. O si eso pasando algo por tiempo de peligro. Because they know that in those first ninety days a lot of things can change. Es que por esos noventa días algo puede pasar. And the same way God. Y esa manera Dios. Said to the people of Israel. Le dijo al pueblo de Israel. Yeah, I brought you out of Egypt. Te sacado de Egipto. I brought you through the Red Sea. Sí, a pasar el mar rojo. I provide you manna and quail. Sí, te he provisto el maná y las cordonices. Y las cordonices. And I also gave you water from the rock. Y yo, agua de esta piedra. But now there's got to come a point in time after 90 days. Hoy llega el punto después de 90 días. That you don't follow the God that does. Que no sigues el Dios solo que hace. But the God who is the I am. El Dios quien es el yo soy. And that's a major difference that we have to come to as Christians. Y es una diferencia que debemos ver nosotros como cristianos. That we seek the God that is the God that does. Que buscamos el Dios el que hace. Instead of the God who is. El Dios que es. And sometimes we wonder how come I am stuck in this level. Y a veces nos preguntamos por qué estoy en este nivel. How come I can't seem to move on in my faith. Y por qué no puedo moverme más en mi fe. It's because you 
move by things that you see. Es que te mueves por you los move cosas only by things you receive. Te por las you cosas only go to recibir. church when man shows up at your door. Solo vas a la iglesia cuando llega el manera. But there comes a point in time cuando llega el punto when the man is going to stop. Que el maná va a and you have to go into the field que ir a los campos and look for your food. Y you you got to grow your food. Que you que you got to manufacture what you take. And a lot of times we have moved in our faith. No hemos movido because esas instead veces. of being 90 days on probation, porque no pasan 90 días de probación. We've been under three years. Hemos pasado we've been años. ten years. Diez años. Without moving the probationary period. Sin mover ese tiempo because de we prueba. only believe in God. Porque solo creemos en Dios. For what He does. Por lo que él hace. Instead of the God who is. No, Dios quien the es. God who is. Dios quien the es. God who is. Dios Dios quien who es. was. Quien and es. forever will quien be. We gotta move on from that. That we are now Christians that believe in the God who is the great I am. Not just the God that gives. Not the God that just heals. Not the God that just answers. But whether you answer or not, I will still praise you. Whether you heal me or not, I will still glorify you. Whether you bless me out of this problem or not si me sacas ese problema, you're si still my strong tower si eres yeah. we gotta see for God for who he is instead of seeing for God for what he does you know people will tell you I love you Personas nos dirán, te amo. I love you for what you do. Te amo por las cosas que haces. But do you really know who I am? Pero sabes quién soy yo. If you were to ask my wife, se pregunta mi esposa, she would be the really the one who would tell you whether she loves me or not. Es la persona que realmente dirá si me ama si o no. Because she does not love me for what I do. Porque no me ama por las cosas que yo hago. But she loves me for who I am. No me ama porque que yo soy. For my good things. And my bad things. For my way to inspire people. And the way sometimes I have a bad temper. And overall, it doesn't matter what I do. Sometimes it doesn't matter what I say. She just loves me for who I am. And it's the same with God. You cannot just love him for what he does. You people say, I love this person. But do you really know who they are? In the same way, we cannot profess to love God without knowing who He really is. Without knowing His love. Without knowing His purpose. Without knowing what His promises. And that's what God was telling His people. See, I am the God that have seen you suffer in Egypt. He says, I am tired of seeing people take advantage of you. He says, for this is what the Lord says to the house of Jacob, verse 3, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. See, I like that because he says, this is what you are to tell to the house of Jacob. Jacob the liar. Jacob, el Jacob the deceiver. Jacob, aquel que está Jacob the cheater. All those who are part of this that house. I have a word for them. I will come to them. In the same way I found you in the wilderness. The same I wrestled with Jacob. The same way I provided for Jacob. The same way where Jacob thought that his dreams were dead. And yet he got to see Joseph and his family. In the same way Jacob Jacob thought that there was never going to be an answer. The same way that Jacob thought that life was over. That he thought that once he buried Rachel, things were going to be done. But God said, you need to tell the house of Jacob that I have a word for them. 
I have a word of healing. I have a word of promise. I have a coat of many colors. I have a descendants for them. I have a promise. I have a covenant that I have made with the house of Jacob. But he doesn't call them the descendants of Jacob. But he says you need to tell the Israelites. Son. Because God changed Jacob's name to Israel. He says you will now be known as Israel. Ser conocido como Israel. Because Israel means prince or God. So you need to tell the house of the past and the children of the future that the God of the present is going to bridge the past and going to connect it to the future by the promise that I have for you today. I'm here to tell you that God is going to look at your past. And he's not going to sentence you. He's not going to condemn you. But he's going to say, I need to show you that when you did not have any place to rest, I still provided a rock to call your pillow. When you thought your children were gone, I was providing for Joseph in the middle of Egypt. When you thought all oh, hope was gone in the middle of the famine, I provided food through your own child to give me you. For you know, your past is not a life sentence. But your past is a lesson you need to learn from. He was reminding the people of God. I am telling the house of Jacob, the house that made mistakes, the house that failed me, the house that wouldn't submit to me, the house that was trying to cheat me, the house that tried to run away from me, that in the same way I did not condemn Jacob, but because I made the promise to his grace, Grandfather, if my word is bigger than your failure, my word is bigger than your diagnosis, my word is bigger than your curse, my will is bigger than your stubbornness. I still am the God of the house of Jacob. That I can walk into a disorder and make it into an order. I can walk into chaos and make it into the place of promise. And now I'm here to tell the Israelites, the descendants of Jacob, that who I have changed their name. I have changed their destiny. I have changed their location. I have changed their mindset. I have changed what the future will look like. I am the God that needs to speak to you. To reveal you what the destiny needs to be for you. God wants to talk to you tonight. And he wants to say, I recognize your past. But I also see your future. I recognize the mistakes. But I also see the victories you don't even know you're going to have. And the God who is the I am who I am. That your body that your mind that your spirit cannot understand I'm about to navigate you it's just like the boat in the middle of the darkness I'm going to move you through the rocks I'm going to move you through the waves and you're not going to understand you're not going to comprehend how things are going to come into your life how things are you going to be blessed with but there are things are going to remove there are things that are going to have to end there are things that are going to die out in the desert and yet through all of this tell your children and tell your children's children you yourselves he says in verse 4 I have seen what I did to Egypt 
vosotros vices que hice con los egipcios. And how I carry you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Y os tomaré sobre las alas de águilas y los traigo a mí. I brought you to myself. Te traje a ser mí. Whether you're still Jacob. Si sos Jacob. Or whether you're still Israel. O si sos Israel. You're still the same person. Son la misma persona. Because you're washed by my blood. Porque sos salvado por mi sangre. And you're still the same promise. Sos la misma promesa. It's the same destiny. Es el mismo destino. You can change your name. Puedes cambiar tu nombre. You can try to change your gender. Puedes cambiar tu nombre. Change your language. You can try to change your culture. But my promise transcends all these things. My word never returns void. And because I have made this covenant, it is not dependent on what you do. But it depends on my mercy. It depends on my grace. It depends on who I am. And not who you are. I will carry you on eagle's wings. I have a plan for you. I have a purpose for you. No longer call you slaves. No call. No longer call you stranger. No call you servant. But Jesus says, now I call you friend. I call you my own. I call you a child of God. I call you the salt of the earth. I call you the light to all the nations. I call you part of a royal priesthood. I am here to call you by a new name. Leave the Jacob behind and pick up the new name. In the same way I picked you up on eagle's wing. Pick up your new promise. Pick up your new anointing. Pick up your new cloak. Pick up your new vision. Pick up your new wisdom. Pick up your new understanding. And see how things were going to change for you. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. See, this is not about just about you. It's not about just Jacob's descendants. But he says, I'm going to make you my treasure possession. You will only invest in the things that are treasured to you. Tú solo vas a invertir las cosas que son un tesoro para ti. So if you love material things, así que te gustan las cosas materiales, you're going to invest in those material things. Vas a invertir en las cosas materiales. So that it will be a treasure to you. Para que sea un tesoro para ti. Sometimes people say, a veces personas dicen, I don't know why my wife don't love me. Yo no sé por qué mi esposa no me quiere. All she does is she looks down on me. Ella solo me mira de menos. Every time I try to give her a little love, cada vez que le quiero dar amor, she never gives me no sugar. No me regresa amor. She never gives me no sweet kiss. No me regresa los besos. And the reason is, la razón es, is that you never invested in her. Es que no invertiste en ella. Yes, you provided for the house. Sí, provías por tu casa. You provided for the groceries. But when was the last time the two of you went out? When was the last time the two of you spent time alone? Spent time together? When was the last time you invested in that relationship? When was the last time you invested on your children? You cannot go to your bank and say, how come I don't have any money? When the bank will answer you, it's because you never made a difference. Deposit. And every time you got paid, you spent it all on other stuff. And it's the same way with our families. God says, I will make you my treasure. I will invest in you. But I also expect a return from you. You will never give me all I give to you. Nunca puedes darme todo lo que yo te doy a ti. But I ask for a tenth. Pero te pido un diez por ciento. I ask you to come to church. Te pido que vengas. I ask you to praise my name. Te pido que adores mi nombre. I ask you to read my word. Te pido que leas mi palabra. If you want to be my treasure possession, si quieres ser mi tesoro, I expect at least a thank you. Yo espero un gracias de ti. I expect at least a hallelujah. Maybe I expect a little witness testimony. In the same way you want sugar from your wife. God wants a little sugar from you. Say, God, you're so good to me. God, you love me. God, you've been blessing me. God, you are amazing for what you have done and what you are doing and what you will continue to do. If we expect the same 
think from the people we love on earth. How much less are we going to expect from God that He looked to God the Father? He looked at God the Son. He looked at God the Holy Spirit. And He said, Let us make men in our own image. He is part of who I am. He's part of my DNA. And if I'm going to invest in man, if I'm going to invest in woman, if I'm going to invest in the family, I also expect a return. A return of affection. A return of gratitude. A return of thanksgiving. When was the last time you thanked God for what He has done? Not waiting for the miracle. Not waiting for the answer. But while you were still on hold, you were still praising Him. While you were still looking for a job, you said, God, you're going to find a place for me. As you were still going to the treatment facility, you said, God, I believe that this is the day that the soul has been. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You got to walk every Every day, whether you are blessed or don't feel blessed, whether you feel like lifting up your arms, or you feel so defeated you can't even get out of bed, but you gotta say, God. It is your goodness. It is your mercy. It's because you call me your friend. It's because I am a child of God. It's because I am the head and not the tail. I praise you. I glorify you. I will magnify your name. You know, I heard a preacher said this week. He says, I praise God for everything. Even when I go to the mall, I praise God when He has an open parking spot near the door for me. And He said, You know what? People think that's so immature. Because they think, well, Doesn't God have other things to do? Que no piense que Dios tiene otras cosas para hacer. Then just to give you an open parking spot. Para tenerte un lugar para parquear tu carro. And he said, you know what? Y él lo sabe. Sometimes when I cannot find a parking spot near the front door of the mall. A veces que no me puedo parquear enfrente de la mall. He says, I go and park in the back of the mall. Yo me parqueo hasta atrás del mall. And now when I park my car in the back of the mall. Y cuando parqueo mi carro de atrás. And I have to walk to the door of the mall. Y tengo que caminar hasta la puerta. I thank God. Le doy gracias a Dios. That I got two feet I can I thank God that I got a heart that beats. I thank God that I have a nose that still breathes. I have a mind that still knows what direction to go to. Sometimes we kind of praise God whether we get a spot in the front of the line or we get a spot in the back of the line. As long as I'm still alive, as long as his heart keeps beating, I will praise his name. For what he has done, because my God is good and his mercy is forever. <laughs> Says in verse 5 Now, if you hear, if you hear, if you obey my voice, question is, what voices have you been hearing? We live in a world that there's so many voices. We live in a world that the voices whisper. And sometimes the voices yell. Sometimes the voices are pictures. Maybe the voices are images. Maybe the voices are past memories of pain. Sometimes the voices are voices of trauma. Sometimes they're voices of violence. Sometimes they're voices of injustice. 
Dios son voces de injusticia. And God says, now if you were to hear my voice, y Dios dice, si escucharas mi voz, if you were to hear my voice, si escucharas yeah. mi voz, in the midst of all that noise, en in the midst of all that sound, en en in the midst of all those things, en en cosas, that are real or not real, que son that o no, are true or not true, que son o no that are hallucinated and are raised in reality, que son ilusiones o son realidad, because sometimes es porque a veces we have to come to terms tenemos que llegar al término that sometimes the biggest battleground que el lugar de guerra más fuerte is the battle of our mind es la, la guerra de nuestras mentes and he said to the Israelites y les dijo a los israelitas if you were to hear my voice si escuchas mi voz my voice si escuchas mi voz You know, Judas heard the voice of Jesus for three years. And yet, the Bible says that Satan entered him. It doesn't mean that only because you hear the voice of God. And only because you eat at the table of Jesus. That things are not going to happen to you. But he says, now, if you hear my voice and obey. And he says, and keep my covenant. So it's not just enough to hear the voice of God. But you gotta put it together by keeping his commandments. The word keep it speaks to reference of looking after animals. That you look after somebody who is sick. That you are attentive to the need of somebody. That's so hard for us to relate to in society today. We live in a world that if somebody appears on your phone and you see that they have a need, all you do is write them a little message and say, I'm thinking about you I'm praying for you or we say that we're friends with somebody and only because we see a picture that they have and we say we like it and after we put our phone down they say do you see what they put Dicen, miren lo que han visto. Did you see the type of photo they put? Mira qué tipo de foto han puesto. We have forgotten how to keep friends. Nos hemos olvidado We forgot how to be attentive to each other. And in the same way you push a button on your phone. You push, push a phone on your tablet. Or maybe you push a, a button on your keyboard of your computer. And you get a response. We think that God is the same. That if I just push a button. If I just drop an envelope in the offering plate. That's going to be more than enough for God to answer my need. God doesn't look for your like. He's looking for you to keep. He's looking for you to be attentive. He's looking for you to guard your heart. He's looking for you to look after his church. To keep your calling. To tend after the calling that God has given you. Because God has not given you something. That is restricted by time. That is restricted by the schedule of people. It's not restricted by the seasons of your life. Or restricted by your circumstance. Or your limitations. Or your finances. Or your family situation. He says, if you keep my commandments, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're trying to overcome, what you're trying to cross over, what you're trying to overpass, no matter how ridiculous it may seem to the world how unimportant it may seem to those close to you but because you are my treasure you are my family
family. You are the keeper of my commandments. I will honor the word that I have given to your heart. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And even though Jacob screwed up, I will call his descendants Israel because they are the prince and princesses of God. No matter where you are in your life, no matter how many times you may have screwed up, or maybe how many times you have forgotten about God, I'm here to tell you, you have a God that doesn't forget you. You have a God that hasn't stopped believing in you. You have a God that has dreams and visions for you. But if you are to seek Him in the same way that He sought you that day, if you were to seek Him tonight, and that day, tonight, could be your turnaround moment for God. Tonight, could be the night that God brings you out of your own probation and promotes you to a new level. Maybe you have gifts that are opening doors, but because of your attitude, maybe because of your behavior, or maybe because your past, as soon as you open those doors, those doors close back on you. Have you ever gone to a restaurant, a restaurant, and you've seen how the waiters walk out of those doors? They just push them, they open and close, and open and close. Sometimes we're like that in the faith. We have gifts that open doors for us, but as soon as people hear what we have to say, as soon as people hear about our wrong opinions, the door just closes, and we think that we got to open it again, and it just closes on us. God is here to tell us tonight, I need to make a covenant with you. That no matter what door is open, will remain open. And sometimes doors are going to close, but those doors need to close for other doors to open. You cannot be afraid anymore to walk in the promises of God. To walk in the mercies of God. In the same way He provided for them in the desert, God is here to provide in your wilderness. In your time of need, in your time of, of, of pain, whatever you're going through, our God is a mighty God. A God that's here to provide and overcome. A God here that is here to conquer and provide victory. A God that is here to oversee your future. A God here that is willing to give wisdom, to give you the finances, to give you and make you an overseer of promises and responsibilities. But as long as you don't are willing to make this 90 day commitment, as long as you still have the mindset of a slave, as long as you keep looking at what you have in, in, in possessions and not see what God has promised for the future, you are always going to run out of water. You're always going to have a need. And what money cannot buy, you're going to have to beg, beg of your enemies, beg of the Pharaoh, beg of Egypt, beg of Nebuchadnezzar. Beg of the enemy, beg of Satan, beg of demons, beg of this man of the world, beg of strong men, because you're never going to have enough for what you need in life. But God says, I am the God of Jacob, and I tell the children of Israel, I am here. In the same way I made a promise to Jacob, because you are descendants of my son. Oh, my son, Jesus, who took your blame, who took your punishment, who took your place on the cross, that no longer do I see your sin, but I see the blood of my son in the same way I call you my children. I call you redeemed. I call you children of the promise of God. And I'm here to make a promise to you. But you need to hear my voice and keep my command. My commands, these are the words you are to speak. These are the words you are to speak, is what verse 6 ends. These are the words you need to speak to yourself, need to speak to your enemies, need to speak to your doubts, need to speak to your past, need to speak to your illness, need to speak to your shortcomings, need to speak to your doubters, to your haters, to your 
people that have looked down on you, the people who have been cursing you. These are the words you need to speak to them. That because He is my God, and I am not just a hearer, but I'm also a doer of His word. I know that He's going to take me up in, the, in eagle's wings and make me the treasure possession of His heart. Let us stand tonight as we close. Let us stand and let us thank God for the word we received tonight. For reminding us that even though gifts may open doors, it is our relationship with God that will promote us. That even though we may have financial and physical needs, and we may have all these possessions, do we really have what really needs and what really matters in life? And that is a relationship with God. Let us all bow our heads and pray to God tonight. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. I give thanks to, to God for, for His Word, for His wonderful presence in this place. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for your wonderful presence in this place. Thank you because you talk to us once again. Father, before we come over to the church, you are waiting for us with open arms, ready to bless us all. Thank you. Thank you for the health that we have. Thank you for providing our food, for the place that we call home. Thank you for having a bed to sleep over. Thank you for the cloth that we, that we have. Thank you for our families, children. Thank you for giving us your, your son Jesus. Thank you for forgiving our sins and for writing our names in the book of life. Father, take us back home safely and bring us back tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to have communion. We're going to remember the last supper that Jesus had with the disciples. We're going to hear your word and we're going to have fellowship after the service in the morning. Thank you, Lord. Take us back home safely and bring us back tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.